and welcome to the Regional Health Report. I'm Ann Krebs. This monthly program highlights the world-class health care provided at each of our Regional Health Command Atlantic Medical Facilities, Dental Clinics, and Public Health Units to soldiers, their families, retirees, and other beneficiaries. Our uniformed providers and medical technicians provide excellent care in regional treatment facilities, but how good are they at providing care in the field? Producer Fred Hawley saw firsthand as soldiers from all over the region gathered at Fort Campbell, Kentucky. They competed for the title of Best Warrior. Best Warrior competition allows every organization within Atlantic Regional Health Command to put forward an NCO and a junior enlisted soldier to represent the soldiers of that organization, to compete at the regional level, to get an opportunity to represent the entirety of the Atlantic Regional Health Command. It's motivation, it's a morale boost for the soldier, and it's always, soldiers and NCOs always want to see who's the top dog. You might have an NCO from one unit, uh, maybe say like Fort, uh, Fort Bragg, and you might have another soldier, uh, a winner from Fort Campbell, and then they'll collectively go there compete for MEDCOM, and the winner of the MEDCOM will compete for the Army. The difference between Best Medic and Best Warrior, Best Medic is specific to the uh, AMED. Best Warrior, you're trying to figure out who's the best soldier in the AMED to compete against all warriors in the United States Army. Although it's a competition and competitive, um, you can tell everybody um, is still like trying to invest in each other or can help out whenever they need. Um, and so I think that that's actually helping out a lot, um, especially with me um, personally. Like I know I've asked a lot of questions to a lot of people and they'll help me out, um, no issues. And then so that helps um, decrease the stress level. What brought me to this competition is to build the camaraderie, but um, just compete with the fellow comrades at another level. Uh, I won the non-commissioner of the year at Walter Reed. Uh, so it brought me and my soldier to this next level to compete for uh, against the best NCOs around and soldiers. It was, you know, a bunch of different events to test your physical endurance, your mental endurance, and just the stress added with limited sleep. Each one of these uh, soldiers is representing their organization. I mean, this is their soldier, their NCO of the year out here competing on their behalf. And so when you're in a, uh, when you're in a large organization, you have a, a large group of people to pull from. When you're in a smaller organization and your NCO or your soldier brings home the, the, you know, the, the winning uh, you know, title, it's huge. It's huge to your organization, to your installation. I mean, if you're, you got the soldier of the year, the NCO of the year, I mean, that means a lot. So winning does matter. Yeah, and I'll tell you, even though we're gonna award two winners that were the best, I tell you, everyone was a winner because they came out here. Oh yeah. That warrior spirit, never quitting, never giving up, all the way through the blood, sweat, the tears, the sprains, they didn't <laughs> quit. That's the warrior spirit. You know, you give it your all. You know, you leave everything out on the field. As long as they do their best, they're bringing their smoke. Give it your everything and leave nothing left behind. In other news around the region, we're really proud of our hospital and clinic staffs but we know they don't do it alone. Kenner Army Health Clinic at Fort Lee, Virginia recently held a ceremony honoring their essential teammates, the Corps of Volunteers. In 2016, volunteers donated 3,500 hours to Kenner patients. And finally, the Regional Health Command Atlantic team works hard to provide world-class health care, but each member of the team has a life outside of the facility. Craig Coleman brings us the story of two regional family members who gave a gift to the entire nation. When you're a child, your home is home. It's significant to you. But some homes have significance beyond the family that grows up there. Like this cabin. It was home to the grandparents and father of the Meggett sisters, Laverne and Marvette. They grew up playing in the yard and field surrounding the house on Edisto Island, South Carolina. But the fields were once part of a plantation, and the house was once a slave cabin. We didn't know that my parents grew up in a slave cabin. I'm 50 years old, and to be told that, you know, it was like, wow, the slave cabin, that's what they're calling it. We called it home. We're going to mama's house. The entire house was disassembled, then shipped to Washington, D.C., where it is part of the slavery and freedom exhibit 
in the National African American Museum of History and Culture. We had all sorts of descendants, um, both black and white, around the cabin as it was being dismantled, and it took four days. And in that four days, everyone just started bringing their memories forward, and it was remarkable. One of the members of the work crew, it was a largely Latino work crew, turned to us at the very end and he said, do you know what? One thing I realized standing here is that the multitudes are with us today. The cabin may have been on a former plantation, but the Meggett sisters have fond childhood memories. It was nothing but love every time we went to my grandma's house and we ate good all the time. The Meggett family donated the historic cabin to the nation, but they also donate their talents to Fort Jackson, South Carolina soldiers and their families. Laverne is the medical building construction manager for Moncrief Army Health Clinic after serving in uniform as a senior non-commissioned officer. Marvette is a supervisor of the Integrated Disability Evaluation System at Moncrief. Her job is to work with individuals whose injuries or illness means they may not be able to stay on active duty. She most enjoys helping soldiers who want to stay on active duty remain. It's an honor most times if we can keep the individuals on active duty. We have temporary disability retirement. Those service members, some of them want to come back to the military. And so far, since I've been at Moncrief, we have, I would say, 10 individuals that came back and wanted to remain on active duty. So after their experience on TDRL, they came back to the military, and they're doing great. Whether serving the Army family in South Carolina or representing their family heritage in the nation's capital, the Meggett sisters put Army values on display. That's the Regional Health Report for May. Join us next month for another show highlighting health care across the region. In the meantime, don't forget to check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and YouTube. We're also on the Army Medicine channel of the Defense TV app. Thanks for joining us.